Great to have you with us here on the Commercial Real Estate Show. I'm Michael Bull. And today our topic is the Self Storage Association. Remember, if you'd like to know the absolute latest on any commercial real estate related topics, check out our on demand show podcast. For example, last week we covered the restaurant industry and the week before the latest on the debt market, including the best sources for financing particular asset types. There are lots of interesting shows to choose from. Grab your phone, tablet, or computer and visit iTunes or the Commercial Real Estate Show website site commercialrealestateshow.com. Like I said today, we're talking about self-storage industry. Please welcome my next guest, Mike Scanlon, President CEO, Self Storage Association. The Self Storage Association, SSA, is a nonprofit organization formed in 1975 to serve as the official trade organization and voice of the U.S. and international self-storage industry. Mike, thanks for joining us today. Great to be with you, Michael. Well, I appreciate it. And, and Mike, to help us get started, uh, give us a little perspective of just how big this self-storage sector is. I'm not sure that everyone, you know, it's not one of the main food groups, right? Tell us about that. We're sneaky big. <laughs> sneaky big. Uh, last year, the NFL, all 30 teams combined, did $9 billion. And last year, the recorded mu- music industry, Lady Gaga and all those guys, you know, they did something like uh, $21 billion. Self-storage this year will do $24 billion Wow. in terms of total revenues. That is sneaky. You're sneaky big. <laughs> okay. And uh, and it, sometimes I've heard to a self-storage association, or not the association, but the sector, referred to as the Cinderella sector. What's all that about? Well, uh, we're not as glamorous as a high-rise uh, office building or a, a mall. Um, and so we've always kind of been relegated to a secondary status, if you will, in the commercial real estate industry. But during the recent recession, when uh, many of the uh, the big fancy uh, segments of the industry kind of took a nosedive. Self-storage sagged a little bit, but we didn't take that nosedive like everyone else. And the Wall Street Journal said that the self-storage industry is recession resistant. Mm-hmm. And that really helped because people started to take notice and all of a sudden Cinderella was discovered up in the attic. you know. And so now we are uh, right there as a mainstream uh, part of portfolios that are involved in all of commercial real estate. People are hedging their bets by putting some in self-storage. Yeah. Well, that's a good point. And, and you know, Cinderella was uh, pretty when she got all dressed up, right? I mean, you think about some of these self-storage centers. When you drive down the road, you see this beautiful building, and you think, is that really a self-storage center? So some of these uh, facilities are really uh, looking pretty good, aren't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. In fact, on your way to work today and on your way home tonight, you're going to pass more self-storage facilities than you are hamburger joints. <laughs> because in the United States, there are 37,000 McDonald's, Wendy's, and Burger Kings, if you add them all up. There are 48,500 self-storage facilities. Wow. So it's a, it's a growing and big industry. Yeah, I know. I think some people may think of the, the smaller ones they see in more rural areas, but uh, there's def- definitely some uh, almost high-rise type of facilities now, aren't there? Right. As we yeah. get closer to residential areas in order to meet zoning requirements, yeah. we're going up, and uh, the buildings look like uh, office buildings or even apartment buildings in some neighborhoods. Yeah, and you mentioned the, the recession and that the uh, self-storage uh, did okay. How, how did it do? Was it really recession uh, resistant? Resistant, right. <laughs> yes, we were. Yeah. Uh, we had fewer defaults than any other segment of the commercial real estate industry. In fact, uh, even those defaults in many cases were results of a divorce, it had nothing to do with the economics of the facility itself. Uh, so we, we came through that. Uh, we dipped a little bit, but we didn't really uh, uh, take the kind of dive into the Calcutta commode that a lot of other segments uh, took during that recession. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, you know, and you think of uh, self-storage, where I do, I think there's some big players, right? Some, some big major REITs in the space. And then, then you've got some of the, the smaller owners. Tell us about the, the makeup of the ownership and, and consolidation. What's going on there? Right. Um, there, with 48,500 facilities in the industry, mm-hmm. uh, the public companies, and there are five of them, many people, there are the four REITs, but there's also U-Haul is involved in self-storage in a big way around the country. So the five public companies uh, control or operate around 54 100 stores, uh, which is really only about 11% of the facilities in the United States are either owned and operated or managed by one of the uh, five public companies. Mm-hmm. So uh, the, there's a large base in this industry of one store owner operators. There are almost 30,000 uh, one store owner operators at the base of this industry. 
Interesting. So that opens really the, the sector to a lot of different uh, size investors, doesn't it? There's a lot of different ways to get into this uh, property type, isn't there? Well, sure. If, if you're uh, a, a heavy duty investor and uh, you want to get involved in the industry right now, the best way to do it is to look for a facility in your neighborhood mm -hmm. that you think is really well run and looks good from the curb appeal point of view and that sort of thing. Go to the owner and say, look it, I'm interested in investing in your next deal. Uh, country club money is a big part of how the smaller operators uh, get their money to build a facility or to expand one. If you're just an ordinary investor, you know, like I am, I guess, mm -hmm. you, you can look at these five public companies and uh, kind of build on their success by buying stock in any one of the, uh, we have public storage, you've got extra space, you've got Cube Smart, you've got Sovereign, which does business as Uncle Bob's, and then of course U-Haul is the fifth. Uh, those are all the stocks and they're doing very well these days. They're paying dividends, right? Yes, they are. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Well, uh, you know, I see uh, self-storage facilities in, in real high income areas like we talked about before and then in some rural areas. Tell us about demographics for self-storage, where, where should we buy one or where should we build one? Well, uh, building one is a tricky subject. and Most people are buying today because it's cheaper to buy a facility and fix it up than it is to start from ground up construction in terms of cost. Um, but in the old days when self-storage started out, it actually started out, it's contrary to the way many fads move across this nation. It started in the Southwest, in Texas, in Arizona, and in Southern California, and it worked its way east. Uh, and to New England is New York and New England are the last vestiges where self storage is just moving in some places now. Um, and when we started, we were usually put in industrially zoned areas um, or uh, heavy commercial, that sort of thing. And more recently, to try to get closer to the residential areas where a lot of our customer base comes from, mm -hmm. uh, we now, uh, one in 11 American families now rents a self storage unit today. And so as you get closer to the residential bases, uh, trying to get into uh, light commercial and even semi-residential type zoning areas, uh, we've had to build the stores to make them look uh, uh, more curb appeal, more eye appeal, so they don't look like a row of doors out there you know, on the highway. So the demographics then is pretty diverse? Yes, our demographics really spread across every uh, group. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, roughly 47% of our customer base makes less than $50,000 a year, and 63% of our co customer base makes less than $75,000 a year. But we have renters from uh, very low income all the way up to the, the very wealthy. And it's an interesting uh, sort of thing because the people who, um, who rent from us, uh, their demographics are such that when uh, the various governments around the country try to put sales taxes on self-storage, and they have, and we've been able to defeat those efforts, we explain to them that they're not hurting the self-storage industry by putting a tax on. They're actually hurting uh, middle-income Americans that make fifty to $75,000 a year. That's who's getting hit by these sales taxes. Because they're the it. ones using the space. That's right? right. They rent it. Yeah, I mean, I use a storage space. I store a boat trailer, so. A lot of people do that, <laughs> yes. And I've also, uh, you know, I've used storage uh, when I was in between homes uh, and uh, had to store my, all my furniture in them, so. Uh, well, lifestyle transitions yeah. create our business. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's a, a new job and a move, or whether it's a marriage or a divorce or a death in the family uh, or a retirement, uh, that sort of thing. All these lifestyle changes create the demand for self-storage. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, great. Well, stay with us. We'll be uh, right back in a moment, and we'll have some resources for you available at the association website. I'm Michael Bull. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We'll be right back. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you in part by your friends at Bull Realty. When your business requires proven performance, visit bullrealty.com or call 800-408-BULL. Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is the Commercial Real Estate Show. Great to have you with us today. Well, each week we focus on a topic here interesting to business owners, investors, and real estate professionals. Be sure to catch topics of special interest to you. Sign up for a once-a-week email announcing the show topic at commercialrealestateshow.com. Well, today our topic is Self-Storage Industry 2014. We're talking with Mike Scanlon, President and CEO, Self-Storage Association. And uh, Mike, I'd like to talk a little bit about the new construction and, and growth of the sector. What do you expect to see moving forward? Over the last two or three years, Michael, we've had uh, 
300 to 400 new facilities go up inside the United States each year. Uh, however, now that we're uh, in a kind of a more of a boom economy, uh, we're finding out that uh, it wouldn't be surprising if we if the industry built some 800 new facilities next year in 2014. That's kind of the pace at which we were headed. Uh, as we check uh, various building permits and things of that nature, we, we think it's going to be in excess of 800 new facilities going up around the country. And you think with the growth in the sector and the improving fundamentals that that uh, level of construction is, is okay for the sector? I think so. We've had a lot of pent-up demand. Uh, occupancies have been rising. Um, and so I think in, in many of the major urban areas, there is room for uh, yeah, carefully inserted facilities. Yes. Right. Yeah, people like to hold on to their stuff, don't they? they yes, don't. They, they love their possessions. <laughs> That's right. right. Especially us Americans, right? Thank God they do. That's right. Well, you, you talk about new construction and, and being careful. Uh, what are some tips for an investor maybe buying a, a value-add uh, self-storage center or someone building a new one? Well, I think, first of all, they've really got to do some great due diligence in the markets these days because you can put in a new f facility here and there, but some markets are very overbuilt, and uh, you need a good feasibility expert, a, a fellow or a woman who's not afraid to say, no, right. this is not a good place for a self-storage facility. Um, and it re you really have to do the work. It, the old days of knock down a cornfield and put up another one are over. Right. Uh, now you have to be very careful about where you put these investments, especially when you're talking three, four, five million dollars to put in some of these new ones. Yeah. And as Ryan said with uh, Reese, that you have better information available now, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Reese reports, especially in the top 50 markets, are very helpful, and we're we're glad to be working with the folks at Reese. Okay. And if they'd like to get information on those Reese reports, they can get those right through your association, right? Uh, if they're already in the industry, if you're an owner operator, you can buy the reports through the Self Storage Association. If you're in the financial community, you would go to Reese to get them. Okay. And tell us about some of the other resources that are available through the association for, for operators and owners and investors in the space. Well, obviously data is a good place to start. I mean, we now are able, we do our own data and research and we do polling every quarter. So we have a really good p feel on the pulse of the industry here at the, uh, the Self-Storage Association. Um, but with Reese now adding the rental rate information and occupancy information, we're, and they're sub-marketing, you know, I think they have 50, 50 top markets and 280 sub-markets within those uh, where we can give you detailed information on occupancy and rental rates. Um, but at the, at the National Association, and actually we're international these days, uh, data, uh, lobbying, and uh, we do an awful lot of lobbying work, at, mainly at the state level with uh, state lien laws and tenant insurance, that sort of thing. Um, but we also do uh, uh, lots of uh, meetings and conventions. We do two national conventions a year. Um, we moved the spring convention around. We're going to be in Atlanta in 2014, and then we're in Las Vegas at Caesars Palace every September. Um, but we also have a, a lot of uh, communication, uh, monthly magazine, as well as uh, educational workshops throughout the year. We put a, on an economic summit. It'll be in New York City in January. Uh, we have a winter ski uh, function out in uh, Park City this year. Uh, and uh, these are opportunities for people not only to get away and network, but also uh, get a chance to learn what's latest in the industry and what's going on. So we can do a ski in, ski out self storage center. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> but we have publications, we have a lot of legal information, which is yeah. very important in our industry. Yeah. And so we have the, if you're a member of the National Association, you can belong to the self storage uh, legal network and also get a copy of the self storage legal review, which comes out six times a year. And uh, we're now making that legal network available through the state associations as well, where they can get really expert opinions from lawyers like Scott Zucker mm -hmm. uh, to give them information about how to handle a particular customer situation. Okay. And the training, is it available all uh, in, in, uh, in studio? I'm in a studio. In class, or is it also available online? Uh, online as well. And we also tape all of our national convention sessions and put them on our website. But we have a, a thing called the Acquisition Valuation Course, where we provide a computer model where you can go in and actually learn how to value your own property or look at deals and, and evaluate various deals that way. That's fantastic. Well, Mike, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate you being here. Thank you, Michael. It's good to be here. If you'd like more information from Mike and the Self Storage Association, visit selfstorage.org. Well, stay with us. We're going to talk to an attorney next who will talk to us about the self storage industry and some mistakes investors and operators should avoid. I'm Michael Bull. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We'll be right back. 
The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Atlanta Office Liquidators, new and used furniture liquidators, France Media, publications and conferences, and Bull Realty Commercial Brokerage, a great place to do business. For more information on these companies or to access additional podcasts, videos, or blogs, visit commercialrealestateshow.com.